Jerry, Jerry, can I, can I stop ripping you? You want a head scratch? Oh, uh, welcome to Mental Health Mondays. Uh, statistically speaking, you're probably pooping, but that's okay. Everybody does it. Except squirrels, which Karen assures me are basically evil. Uh, Karen, uh, can I talk about casseroles? You want to talk about casseroles? Karen doesn't want to talk, so I'll talk. All right, so, um, there's, uh, when I was in uh, middle school, I got into a car accident. I wasn't driving because I was in middle school. And, you know, it was the ambulance and the ER and, you know, the whole hoot and nanny kind of thing. It was a long day, you know, like, I got some x-rays, which is probably good because they saw into, like, saw no evil inside of me. My mom got some stitches and we got home, you know, it was like very exhausting, you know, physically and emotionally because there were no puppies to be found. And uh, our, our neighbors knocked on our door and they had soup and these little cheesy biscuit things, Karen, that were really freaking, I just loved them. And it was just so wonderful because the last thing you want to do when you're coming home from a car accident that was unplanned, like most of them are, is to have to like go and make some dinner. And it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, we felt loved and supported and cared for and valued and it's like, you know, like, hey, like, you just had a high impact injury all of a sudden, like, let's make you some soup. And it was, it was just nice. Like, they dropped the soup off and they left. Yeah, Karen, they just left. They left us with all the soup. And, you know, it's, it's the kind of neighborly thing where it's like, you know, drop off soup and leave. And we were able to sit and just eat some soup and not have to worry about much of anything because there are also leftovers, Karen. Um, but after I got diagnosed and after, you know, like visiting the psych ward and getting ECT and all that kind of stuff, like no one ever came to drop me, drop off soup or casseroles or lasagna, which I can kind of understand because of all the food allergy and stuff. It's like maybe not the best to, to, uh, to uh, you know, like make something that, that might, you know, have dairy in it or whatever. But... You know, no one also, no one stopped by to Aww. see how I was doing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of crummy, Karen. You know, see if I needed anything, see if I just needed some company or whatever. It was like this thing that like no one talked about. Like it was this big old elephant dookie in the room. And because, you know, no one offered that kind of just like basic support, you know, of like, hey, you want to like have some, have some Funyuns? or onion rings, or whatever, um, it confirmed in my mind, I'll keep scratching, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, it confirmed in my mind that like, who I was as a person with a mental illness was shameful. And, you know, I'm, I'm no more responsible for the pain of my mental illness, Karen, you're not either, than I was for like the, the car accident. You know, it's, uh, you know, the pain from the car accident. And the pain, you know, was, it lasts a lifetime. Um, and I sometimes think that there's this notion that when someone is going through like mental or emotional like issues that there's like what the help that needs to be provided is like, you know, solid kind of like, you know, um, 90s sitcom advice where, you know, like the music, you know, it's like you can tell the music is happening and it's like, here's solid advice on how to solve all your problems. And that becomes like a weighty thing where it's like, how do you tell somebody that, like, what to do when, you know, they're going through, like, an active kind of insanity? And, you know, it's, but we don't feel that with, like, physical pain, you know? It's like, I, I had a uh, hairline fracture in my chest, but no one was telling me, like, you know, no one felt obligated to tell me, like, what you really need to do is this. Because they knew they weren't doctors. They knew that the best they could do was some soup. And, you know, like... What advice can you give to somebody who's like, you know, in the midst of a hopeless, besides give me belly rubs, Karen? Yeah, yeah, she's awfully demanding today. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it doesn't need to be advice because it's like, we're not doctors, not all of us at least. Karen might be a doctor, but she hasn't sent her, uh, her medical license to me yet. And, you know, all pain is painful regardless of its, of its of if it's physical or if it's, you know, emotional type trauma. And, you know, you, we don't necessarily need to do, you know, like doctorly like things like you need to go do X, Y, Z, and also P and Q, and also shut up and eat your peas. Um, like, 
soup works just fine. Um, I like meatball soup. Uh, I like chicken noodle soup. Uh, I also like lasagna. Karen's a big fan of lasagna as long as there's no onions. Um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, like, we don't have to, like, mutually carry the weight that simply because it's not caused by a physical ailment that, you know, like, oh, holy crap, I have to come up with, like, good, solid advice on exactly what to do. It's like, no, just make some soup. Bring over some ice cream. Spend some time. And now Karen and I are going to spend some time with couples.